Welcome to Memorial Cooking Innovations. I'm Tim Scallon, registered dietitian. And I'm Manuel Marini, executive chef. How okay. are you, Tim? Doing good. How about you, chef? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. All right. We got an exciting show today. So, kind of some different things. Yeah. Tell us what we're cooking today. Well, we're going to do a, a mushroom risotto, Ooh. which is a traditional uh, rice from Italy. And then we're going to top it off with a uh, chicken and feta cheese roulade. Okay. All right, so that'll right. be fun. And then we're going to finish it off with some uh, pear flambe. How's that? That sounds really exotic. Okay, so let's get started. So, so what are we going to well, start we got with? The, the ingredients for the, uh, the risotto is, is our uh, arborio rice, okay. which you got me some. Yep. And uh, we're gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat the pan up a little bit. And, you know, arborio rice, you can find this in the grocery store in the, the, in the rice section. Uh, you know, these days you have a lot of different specialty rices. And arborio comes from a town called arborio in northern Italy in the Po Valley. I had to look that up to see where that was, but it's a uh, it's, uh, northern river, uh, river in northern Italy. Italy. Mm -hmm. You're right. So, so we're going to saute some uh, uh, celery and some carrots. Okay. All right. And if yeah. you don't mind, I'm going to give you this one and we can fill the rice up. Okay. Now this rice, it's not one of those that you can just uh, bring it to a boil and let it simmer by itself. You're going to have to really, we're going to have to stir it. Okay. So, it's so one of these, uh, you know, rice that you really have to dedicate some time to. And so, but it's wonderful when it comes out. So this is a uh, this is a non-traditional rice cooking method. Right. You know, this is one of those cooking techniques that that we get to learn on the show. That's one of the things I like about this show. Is you're teaching us some different things about cooking. You know, I'm used to the rice that you uh, you you have uh, you you put a cup of rice and then two cups of water and you boil uh, boil it together and then. Uh, uh, simmer it for 14 minutes. You know, that's kind of the, in this part of the world, that's the traditional method of cooking rice. Right, and this one's just a little different. So what we're going to yeah. do is we're going to saute this together real nice. Ooh, you got some really good stuff in there. I got some, uh, like I said, celery, carrots, a little bit of onions, uh, mushrooms. We're going to mm -hmm. cook the mushrooms a little bit, and then we'll add our rice, Ooh. and then we'll add our uh, garlic to it. And now the ingredient with this calls for vegetable broth, mm -hmm. a little skin milk, and yeah. a little half and half fat free. And in this recipe, as you'll notice that we do in a lot of our recipes, we're using a low-sodium vegetable broth. Uh, this particular one, it doesn't have to be this. This one's organic. It doesn't have to be. The key on this uh, label is the sodium. Right. So Good flavor, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, if you don't mind, let me have my right. I got the rice yep. right here. Yeah. Okay. So you're just sauteing these vegetables till you bring some flavor out, and then you're going to... I'm going to add my rice to it. Okay. All right. And then we're going to, like I said, we're going to add the, let me borrow this spoon right here. Yep. We're going to add a little bit of garlic to it. Okay. As usual, you add that garlic, Last. not at the, yeah, not at the front where it burns. So now we start cooking it. Ooh. Okay. And then we'll add our vegetable broth. I'm smelling this. It smells really good, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. And your recipe calls to add this a little bit of time so that it, and stir it so that it absorbs. Exactly. And you can do this this uh, cooking method with other rices too. It doesn't have to just. It doesn't be have to Italian be the rice. Italian one. You're right. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna let this uh, simmer for a little bit, and then we'll add the, the skin milk and the uh, low low fat. Uh, the fat half free, and half, half, fat and free half. half. Yes. 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 Okay. So we'll let that boil for a little bit, okay. and then we can get started on the chicken. Okay. So we're gonna do the chicken while that's going. I am actually gonna switch. Okay. Burners, so we can okay. place that one. So there can I kind of play with this? Yes, as you a, can. Okay. Yes, you can. Right. So, the what chef I got here is letting me cook. Okay. What I have here is a nice six-ounce chicken breast. Okay. Right, skin, no skin, skinless. Yep. yep. And then I have a. Oh, here it is. We all have those Ziploc bags. Yep. So the best thing to do with this is just put a bag on top. If you got the saran wrap, you can pass a nice little bag on top. And the reason for that is because we're going to pound it. Okay. And we want to pound it so uh, we don't scatter chicken all over the place. You That's know, when you're pounding idea. it, so don't want chicken it. on the refrigerator. Don't want it anywhere. Okay. Just to where exactly where you want it. So okay. We do that, and I got my meat mallet here, which is this is a really nice tool, by the Ooh, way. Oh, okay. Now you, this is like a special chef tool. Yeah, actually, it's really nice because it has different. Okay. Heads that goes to it. We're going to use the medium size because we so, don't really. So for the people at home, you could really use anything for you this. Can, you can. Uh, you have a wooden mallet, don't you, or something like that you were yes, talking earlier yes. about? So okay. what I want to do 
is I'm just gonna pound this lightly, little, because we're gonna roll it, okay? That, that's the whole idea. So, uh, roulade. In fact, that's what that name means. Is is uh, chicken pounded out flat and then rolled around something, okay? And so, uh, I, uh, and so basically, what you're doing here is you just want to make it flat, huh? That's it. Okay. Now here, I am gonna add a little bit of olive oil. Yeah. And then we're going to saute the spinach with a little bit of onions. Okay. Because we're going to stuff it with some spinach, some basil, mm -hmm. uh, calamaro alas. Ooh, okay. You so. know, now, now this recipe was one that we really, I better stir this rice here. Uh, we really had to alter uh, this recipe. In fact, we actually started with a Sodexo file recipe on chicken roulade. And for those people who don't know, uh, Memorial Cooking Innovations is a... Uh, joint venture between uh, Sodexo Food Service and Memorial Health System where you combine the talents of a chef and a dietitian to get delicious meals that are, guess what, healthy. Healthy and taste good. Yeah. And so we took this Sodexo recipe and we had to alter it because the, the Kalamata olives and also you've got some feta cheese in this. And you know those are both very high sodium. And so the lesson here is not that we can't use these high sodium foods. The lesson is we have to be very careful because we have to use very small amounts. And so this recipe, I think, calls for like four calamari olives, calamata olives. One of the things that you and I talked about one time was adding spinach, uh, lemon juice to my spinach. And that gives oh, yeah. such a, brings a, such a nice flavor. Yeah. So this is what I did. OK. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pull this plastic out. All right. And I got my spinach here that I just sauteed. Okay. Let me put this up here. And what I want to do is I'm going to bring my spinach over the chicken. Okay. Because we don't want to overcook it yeah. that much. Okay. And then okay. we're going to have, so I got some sun dried tomatoes. Okay. Another flavor uh, enhancing uh, element in element this dish. On the sun dried tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And we uh, looked up on sun dried tomatoes, right? We yes. had a nice little. The sun-dried tomatoes, they're, they're really flavor intense. Uh, they can be a little pricey in the grocery store. They can, but can we do it ourselves? We can make Why them not? ourselves. So if you've got that uh, tomato out of the garden, uh, you basically cut the stem end off. Now the best ones, uh, as we were looking this up, the best ones to use if you're going to sun-dry your own tomatoes is the Roma tomato. And you cut the stem end off, cut it lengthways. You can do it lengthwith or quarter. Yeah. This and, is probably the right time. Mm -hmm. Nice and hot outside. Yep. Yeah, and but now we we were looking at the oven method for for people around here. Okay. Uh, set your oven on two hundred. Uh, put them in, on a, in a cookie sheet, and it takes like about six to twelve hours on real low. So you got to keep an eye on them. But that's how you sun dry tomatoes. It's that easy. Yeah. One of the things that we talked to was the calamaro olives. They're high on sodium. Yep. So, so how are you going to stretch these to make them go well, with we, this recipe? You can buy them already. The calamaros, you can get, uh, they're available everywhere. Yeah. So what we did, we rinsed them off a little bit just to get some of that sodium yep. off. Yep. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slice. And the flavor is always there. You can yep. rinse them off and the flavor will stay yep. there. So we're just going to add a little bit of them because yep. we want that flavor. We want mm -hmm. that look. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to add our feta cheese, yep. which is right over here. Yep. Now here again, this is a high sodium food. You have to use a very small very, amount. We want the flavor. And, and in the recipe, now you know we're kind of demonstrating here, but in the recipe, uh, we're very precise on our measurements. And so these two ingredients you don't, you don't guess on. Uh, you don't take any license with. And then a little bit of that uh, mozzarella. And that way the, the nutritional at the end uh, is still accurate. Now, if you weren't worried about the sodium, then you could use whatever amount you want. But of course, in, in, in our show, the premise is, is how do we take foods, make them taste good, but they're still, they fit our healthy lifestyle guidelines. Good. Okay. So now we're done. Now so, we're going to roll it. So we want to really um, overlap the meat. That way everything sits in the middle. Just la, like that. Roulade. 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 So we see. So that looks okay. good. So we're going right. to... Again, I'm a, the same pan I had earlier, what I'm yep. going to do, if you don't mind stirring oh, that yep. one, that one's Sorry. looking good. Yeah. I'm going to let this heat up just quite a bit, and then we're just going to go ahead and sear it, and then we're going to finish this in the oven. Okay. All right. All right, now you were talking to me earlier about there are some different ways to do roulade. Uh, 
uh, like in this case, you just basically rolled it up. Rolled it up. T tell me how. Uh, Another one would be that we insert toothpicks. Okay. To keep it tight. Yeah. Or yeah. we could use butcher string. Oh, and okay. that's that's probably something that we'll probably do another okay. show on how to tie, okay. you know, properly tie it. So okay. we're just gonna lay this right here tonight, so it'll brown nice and neat. Yep. Okay. I can see that this rice is starting to absorb some of the uh, liquid. Liquid. And we want the nice vegetables and everything mm -hmm. there. So this rice is not only absorbing the liquid; it's also absorbing the uh, flavors from these sautéed vegetables that you did. I'm going to flip this one over a little bit. Very carefully. And one thing that we, we really need to know, we have to have is that pen has to be hot, so it'll okay. sear really good. Okay. And then once we get it all done, we're going to go ahead and insert it in the oven. How's that? Okay. And so I'm when you throw this one in the oven. Okay, and so when you sear that, you put the seam side down so it kind of like cook it We together. want to brown the top and then we roll it and then oh. finish it in the oven. Okay. Because when it comes out, it'll be nice of golden brown on top. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Good. That's looking good. And, and that, this is one of the items that you start first because by the time the chicken's ready, that rice is ready. It's one, two, three. Okay, there you go. All right, so we don't have to wait for one or the other. They all come up, combined together. How's that? You know, I don't know if I told you, but uh, we had Miss, uh, who was it? Uh, it was Miss Angela Roberts uh, stopped me and she said, you know, I watched uh, Chef Manny make the uh, light barbecue chicken. How did uh, she like it? She loved it. She said, uh, you know, it, I, I watched him do that and he made it look so easy that even I could do it. You know, you can go on memorialhealth.org and I'm catch any other recipes. Yeah, right? that's right. You can download past uh, recipes. You can view past shows. Uh, you can even learn cooking tips like how you did this roulade. Okay. Excellent. I don't know if you can see this or not, but I'm going to tilt that up a little bit. Just see how it's starting to look real creamy. Now, you added to this uh, uh, broth and was it, uh, was it the uh, cream? Uh, was it the fat free half and half? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And so, so you end up getting a real creamy rice. And look at the color in that dish, the orange and the green. You know, it's nothing like uh, uh, whenever you're here live, you know, the, the advantage, and I guess this, this is the reason to come to the live version of our show. We do a live Memorial Cooking Innovations every third Thursday uh, of each month. And what's good about that is, is you get to smell the foods, you also get to taste what, you, what we're you preparing. Uh, that's, it, there's a five dollar charge for that, it's nominal just to cover the cost of the food, and uh, of course you, you, get, uh, you get all these good tips that we're learning. So, uh, and also, uh, uh, I, you know, not only do you go online to get these recipes, but you can also watch us on YouTube. Memorial Cooking Innovations is on YouTube. Did you know you're on YouTube? No, I didn't know, but you know what? I'm going to look. You're going to have to tell your mama that you're on YouTube now. <laughs> Wouldn't she be proud oh, of you? Oh, my daughter. I'll bet she liked that one. There you go. There you go. <laughs> As, Ooh, the rice is looking beautiful. good, doesn't it? Yes. Isn't it? But I'm getting hungry. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get the sauce for the chicken. Okay. Which okay. Is, we're going to do with a little bit of the onions. All right. I didn't put the onions in the chicken because we're going to add it to the sauce. Okay, now so you know how I like onions. So we're going to do saute onions. Okay. And also here, I got some fennel. All right, and so. We, we talked about this fennel, yes, didn't we? Yeah, so. yeah. Okay, now when, when Chef Manny, when we were developing this recipe, Chef Manny uh, said, uh, okay, well, I want to add a little fennel to this. And so when you said that, I, I was thinking, okay, I didn't know what fennel was. I have to admit this on live television. Uh, I was thinking dill weed, don't ask me why. So when you were saying fennel, I couldn't imagine how you were going to cut this julienne. And so now I know, well, fennel is not dill weed. It's something different. This is, it's, it's, a really, nice, it's almost like a celery. It's yeah. got a licorice flavor to it, yeah. so it brings out a nice little flavor to okay. it. Okay. And you got this at uh, Brookshire's, Brookshire's, which is one of our sponsors, and we appreciate Brookshire's for... for uh, and the reason I brought fennel was because I went there the other day, and I said, wow, fennel. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen fennel in a while, okay. so there you go. All right. So it's nice to know. So once in a while, when I don't, you know, you come up with something like that, we should be able to 
bring it out so people will know what it is. Well, you know, it's actually a good message uh, to cook things in season. You know, uh, uh, that's one of the things that makes uh, it, it makes life interesting is uh, eating different things all the time. And, of course, that's one of the fun things about uh, watching Memorial Cooking Innovations is you get to learn some different things. So, anyway, with this fennel, we're going to cut. So you're going to cut him in half. Cut him in okay. half. Now show, show I'm him a show, I'm going to I'm I'm save these pieces because okay. that's going to be our garnish. Okay, okay but, but show whatever, because, you know, people in East Texas don't know what fennel looks like. So, so I, want, I want to hold that up so we can see how that's got different, uh, it's got layers. And the aroma. That's pretty, isn't it? It does smell like licorice. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we're going to cut the, cut the, the core, out. core out. Okay. Okay. You made that and look that, so easy. And then we're just going to um, slice it real, sh real uh, thin, okay? And it doesn't take much, let me tell you. It doesn't take much. Okay. Okay. Now, it is, it does grow, so let me do this. If you don't mind, Tim, if yeah. you don't mind rinsing yeah. this off real quick. Okay. With a little ice cold water. We okay. just get all the dirt that was in there. Let me give you this piece. Okay. And I'm going right. to go ahead and pull the chicken out. Okay. Okay. If you don't mind rinsing that All real right. quick. Here's our chicken. This risotto is looking really good. We're going to add a li little pinch of salt and pepper, if you don't mind, on okay. this one right here. All Just right. a little bit Just of pepper. Pinch. Just a pinch. And I have, your, I have the right pepper here, here. Yep. and I have the salt here. Now, we could always add a little more garlic, you know, yep. if, if we need to. But yep. Just you know, a pinch when the dietitian salt. adds a pinch of salt, it really is just a pinch of salt. It is. You know, people sometimes ask me how, how much salt is uh, low sodium. And the answer is, it's not salting at the table. It's a pinch in it's the dish. It's a pinch. Mm -hmm. We got all those uh, nice vegetables and, and stuff like that that will give it the flavor. Now, okay. all right. I'm going to use the same pan. Okay. Okay, I am going to add my onions. Okay. Once you go ahead and throw the fennel, the fennel in there. Okay. We're going to saute this for a little bit. We're going to add a little bit of white wine. Okay. Let that brown a little bit and then... And if you'll choose a dry white wine for this, it'll also make a nice accompaniment to this chicken dish. Yes. So, so I've just got a nice... Uh, and it's not about how expensive the wine is because mm -hmm. we're all cooking it down. Yep. We just look yep. one in the flavor, so... That's right. And so in, in, uh, in this dish here again, if we're cutting back on those olives and that feta cheese, we can use things like wine. A uh, little the cream, a little yep. cream because we're going to make the sauce out of it and yep. finish it off with a little um, unsalted butter. To add that flavor back in. So we're going to saute this. We're going to let this reduce for a little bit, okay? Okay. Okay, so Chef Manny, how do I know when this rice is done? Well, always have a little taste spoon. Okay. You know, and it doesn't hurt to go ahead and taste it because, like I said, this is where you want the rice to be nice and creamy. Yeah. And it's almost there. And soft. And yeah. soft. Okay. And then to top it off, we're going to add a little Parmesan cheese. That's okay. it, Again, that's why we didn't add salt to it. Okay. Parmesan has some salt in yep. it, so yep. okay. we want to flavor that. Okay. Now, same thing here with my uh, uh, my sauce here. Mm -hmm. We want to reduce how much how much do we reduce or what is reduced. We want to bring it down as much as we can without drying it, right? So okay. we want to reduce at least half. About half so if, if you add like a quarter cup or mm -hmm. a half a cup, you want mm -hmm. a quarter cup. Reduction. Reduce. We okay. want to burn the alcohol, but we mm -hmm. want that flavor to it. Okay. Okay. So this looks pretty good. All right. So here we're gonna add that half and half. We're just gonna make a. We're just gonna add a very little. And this is a uh, this is a fat-free half and half that we also got at Brookshire's. Let's show them that product, uh, Manny. Uh, uh, you know, it's it's half and half, but it's made with a fat-free. So uh, here again, we're saving some calories on that. All right, and some saturated fat. That looks good, huh? Yeah, yeah. So why don't you go. just go ahead and pull it to the side? Okay. And then you know what? I'm gonna grab this pan, Tim, if you don't mind. I'm yeah. gonna put this pan right over here so we can start getting half for our flambe. How's that? Ooh, okay, flambe. So look at our sauce. Our sauce is looking right. pretty good, Ooh, right? It looks beautiful. Okay, so we're, if you don't mind, have me a little bit of that uh, salt-free butter. Okay. We're just gonna add a little bit, okay? Yeah. And that's just to smooth out the sauce. Just a little bit of butter. Okay. Go ahead and keep that. And it'll also help thicken up. Okay. So the sauce is, the butter is almost there. So what I want to do is I'm going to pull this chicken from the plate and I'm going to take this plate with me. Okay. And if you don't mind, let's put, how Some about putting rice on that? Okay. So 
So we're going to do just a, like a bed of rice. Then I'll slice this chicken. And your recipe says cut on a bias. Now a lot of people, many don't know bias. So tell us what that means. Really, it's cut it at an angle. Okay, so cut it at an angle. How's so, this look? That's beautiful. Okay. And let me put this chicken right there. Ooh, that is beautiful. Isn't that nice? It's gorgeous. We're save this one for us. Okay. And then let me get the sauce. If you don't mind, let me get the spoon right yep. here. And then we're going to sauce it up. Mm. And that fennel is going to add a real interesting nice flavor. flavor. And then we're going to top it off with a little Parmesan cheese. You know, I bet this is going to be so different and delicious. And I got fresh Parmesan, by the way. Mm-hmm. Just to flavor it. It's into. better. It's actually lower in sodium than the uh, shaker kind. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. If you want to put it right there. Okay. So we're done with this part, huh? All right. We'll save so, this because this will be our dinner. Yep. Yep. So for dessert, we're having a pear flambe a la mode. Mm -hmm. And especially for this occasion, because you wanted to use fresh squeezed orange juice, I brought a family heirloom, which is Kathy's great grandmother Ludie's juicer. You know all these fancy gadgets we have these days? This is the most efficient way to juice an orange or a lemon. Uh, you know, it gets all the juice and then you just pour it right where you need it. And so that's what we're going to do. Yeah. If you don't mind, can you pass me the butter, Tim? Yep. We're going to start off with the butter. Okay. We're going to add a little butter. We just want to melt it because we're yep. going to saute the uh, canned pears. Now we can use fresh pears. Yep. All right. And uh, one of the, one of the so when fresh or can, you can use can. for this. Today we're doing the can. Okay. Okay. And then I got you some oranges there. Okay, if you don't so mind. I can start juicing. Yes. All right. And how so much juice did we want? You know, I want to show people how easy this is because, you know, if you've never used one of these, it's really, it's an amazing tool. Uh, what's good about this is, is uh, it, it gets all the juice out. Get a little bit of pulp, which is good. Look at that. See how that works? Okay, let's do another one. That was so much fun, I'm going to do another one. Go about how it. much juice do you want on this? I, I, well, I'd say about maybe four halves, okay. two oranges. Okay. And we'll keep the pulp, too. Yeah. I think our uh, recipe calls for something like a quarter cup, cup or something. Yeah. So you don't have to use fresh squeezed. It's just... It, and it doesn't hurt to add a little more extra orange juice, right? It's always yeah. good for you. Yeah, that's right. All now right. i got my pears right here. Okay. We're just going to... We're really, we're really going to saute these pears very lightly. Mm -hmm. Don't want to overcook them. Don't want to overcook them. Now, they're, they're canned. Now, if they're fresh, you still don't want to overcook them. Yeah. But they'll take a little more cooking if they're fresh than if they're, uh, if they're canned. Okay. Let me take that. Okay. And then here we have a little bit of cinnamon. Okay. And a little bit of brown sugar, which we'll need in a minute. So we want to just kind of really heat these up a little bit. You know, cinnamon has a lot of health properties that I didn't know about, but uh, it's one of the oldest spices, in fact, and uh, uh, a very strong antioxidant, uh, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial cinnamon. Good. Okay. If you don't mind, I'm going to grab this right here. Okay. And I'm going to add a little bit of brown sugar because we want to caramelize. Yeah. Okay, so we'll mix that in. Okay. And really, this dessert really takes a... I don't know, maybe five minutes, less than five minutes. Well, yeah, you're throwing it together in no time. And that's even with fresh squeezed juice. Fresh squeezed, so we're going to saute that now. Now, you used a term caramelize, and some people may not know what that means, but basically it's just browning Brown the sugar. Uh, melting the sugar. Really. Yeah, kinda, it there you go. It kind of caramelizes that. So melting it melting in a fat. Melting it down. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Because okay. that's uh, another thing that's going to be our base. It'll help us thicken our juice right here with all the sugar. Mm -hmm. So... Nice color. Beautiful. Now we have a little bit of Grand Marnier. Yeah, did you add the cinnamon yet? No, we're going to add it last. Okay, all right. Okay. Just, just got to keep you honest here. Yeah. Okay. We're going to add a little bit. Now, on an open flame, remember we yeah. did this one time. Yes. In an open flame, pull away. Yeah. Because there's a lot of alcohol You in don't want to singe my beard. No. I, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> okay. So, we don't have flame here, but we are going to pull away just in case. Yeah. Because it does get real hot. Okay, so we want to. And you didn't use much there. Just no, a just little. a little. It's, yeah. This is an orange liqueur. Yeah. Okay. Grand Marnier. Okay. So, and then we'll do the uh, a little bit of brandy. Okay. Again, we'll reduce it, it down to. Smells wonderful. It does, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We'll use a little bit of brandy again. Take it away from the fire. Add a little brandy, and you really want to 
flame that up. Yeah. Okay, put it back in the fire, let the alcohol burn fast. Or you could, you could use a, a lighter or something just to flame. Just to flame. Yeah. Okay. So if you really want to impress your guest, we're not going to flame it here because uh, we're in We won't the, be able to see it yeah. either, but. But, but if you want to impress your guests uh, at the table, uh, you could pour your brandy, carry it to the table, flame it, huh? Flame it in the table. And then after the flame burns out, then you know that it's... We'll do the cinnamon. Okay. And usually when, usually the, the trick to this was that when we flame it, we add the cinnamon and it sparks all over the place. So it's oh, a really nice okay. little vision to That's it. That's a neat idea. Okay. okay. I'm going to have to try that with my, when I want to impress my friends. There you go. So now we... We're good? Okay, all right. That smells good, doesn't it? Yeah. That's you ready for that orange juice? Yep. Let's just pour the this orange juice. This is so aromatic. I'm just going to do beautiful. that. beautiful. Now, okay. if you don't like the pulp, we're, we're going to cook it off. You can just um, strain it and just do that. But you know that pulp is extra fiber. That's excellent. You know how dietitians are. They love that fiber. They love that fiber. And since this is an a la mode, of course, you all, you all, all know that a la mode means with ice cream. And in this case, we picked a sugar-free... Fat free, free ice cream. Got this at Brookshire's. And that's a vanilla. Yeah. Here you go. Good. I think this one's going to be one for me and one for you. Huh? Okay. Good. This is going to be so good. So. All right. Got your ice cream good and hard. That's what you want for an a la mode like this. Yes. You're going to combine hot and cold. Now this particular dessert, you want to really make this uh, right before you, you uh, serve it. So, so you have your guests over, you've, you have, you've had dinner, and then you say, I'm going to prepare a very special dessert for you. We didn't do this ahead. Throw and, this uh, yeah, together this, this in, is it right here. in minutes, and then good hard ice cream right out of the freezer. Okay. Actually, you could scoop them and put the little uh, cups well, in the freezer that's too. True. Nice too. That's true. That's true. You could have that part done again. Yeah. That's a good idea. But this is a good, this is something good where people are around it watching you and yep. you're talking and yep. wow, they're impressed. So. Yeah, that's right. Okay, now you, you have to do this part. This is the... Okay, we want to reduce it just a little part. more, okay. just a little bit more. Okay. Okay, so All right. what I like to do with this, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. I have my little knife. I have my little knife. Like this one? Yeah, let me have that one. Okay. I just want to cut these pears in, in half. Oh, okay. For so presentation. For presentation. All right. You know, you always know when there's a chef in the house. So we'll you know, some of us just cook, but some of us create art. Okay, we'll do I that. Like. Then we'll just yeah. grab this. Let me put that one down. Yeah. We'll grab the pear. Ooh. That's so good. Look at that. Smell that. Yes. It smells good. Smells wonderful. the orange. We're going to be a little greedy, me and you. How about okay. that? All right. I don't have plenty of this. There's so many. Okay. There's so many good things that we could do with this. I'm going to go ahead and... Just a touch, okay. Again, this is one of those desserts that we have to eat right then and there because yes. it will melt. Yes. So let's just put it right here. So maybe I should eat this right right now. I think uh, you should. Because because there's no, uh, no reason in uh, letting this not be good. Okay, so... <laughs> mm. Is that good or what? You have done it again. Okay, I gotta say something. You know, uh, one of the employees stopped me in the hall. It was Miss Kathy Bates, works here at Memorial. And Kathy said, you know, Chef Manny made, we had a meeting and he made this meal for us and it was so delicious. You know what I told her? Huh. I said, anything that guy makes is delicious. You have just got the touch, Chef Manny. Oh, thanks. This is really good. All right, so, okay, so this weekend, what are you doing this weekend? What are you eating? Well, what's the chef eat? You know what? This weekend I'm going to Corpus fishing. Okay. So yeah. hopefully Ooh. we'll do some uh, uh, speckled trout Ooh. if we're lucky. Okay, what with are you going to do with that? Saute with a little bit of light uh, white wine, garlic, mm -hmm. and butter, margarine. Okay, all right. Well, <laughs> Make it healthy, you know. All right, well, while you're there, we're all going to be eating this uh, pear flambe. Excellent. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Memorial Cooking Innovations. Thank you.